Hello, hey everybody and welcome. We are home and I am so excited to be home. It's always wonderful to travel. It's a great experience, but it's such a beautiful thing to come home and be back in the studio here and have everything just sad. I just love it. It's great. Thank you for being here. Hello to everybody in the chat. Hello to the members of the channel as well. Thank you for being here. I want to give a big thank you to my mods today. Grace Kelly's here. Nancy is here. And my Tony is modding today as well. Thank you, everybody, for being here. If you have a question, put question in all caps and have your question follow. Super chats are automatically starred by YouTube. But other questions, we want to catch as many as we can. And I appreciate it. I'm Natalie, and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where we talk about the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing. We discuss my 35 years in Scientology, growing up in Scientology with three generations of my family, and how we left. I also do interviews throughout the week with people in the community, so when you hit the subscribe button, you're going to want to set the notification bell, so you hopefully get a notification when I pop in and go live with those interviews, because those aren't at a scheduled time, so please go ahead and do that. Okay. I believe that is all my housekeeping. We were going to go over all kinds of stuff today. We're going to jump into Tom Cruise, his daughter, Suri's turning 18. What could that possibly mean? Will he remain disconnected? We're going to talk about it. We are going to look at some protest news. We're going to touch on, oh no, Nora got into sharing about some fake accounts on YouTube. We're going to take a look at that. Pasadena Scientology is in trouble. And some of my favorite protesters caught it. We're going to take a look at that. Jessica Palmadessa, Confident Chris in LA Cam. We're at the Pasadena organization. We're going to be looking at Chicago and some crazy stuff that happened there. Just so much, so much, so much. So let's see, where do we want to get started? Let's jump into, let's talk about Tom Cruise and Siri. So you guys, as you know, you guys know the backstory, right? Tom Cruise, Scientologist. Katie Holmes got into Scientology because of Tom Cruise. They had the daughter. Several years in, Katie Holmes realizes, oh my gosh, this is a cult and my daughter is about to start what would be about the time for her to start her Scientology indoctrination and she got out of there. She split. She took off. She ran. She did an amazing job of getting out of there with her daughter. And from everything that we can tell, from everything that we can tell, there has not been a relationship between Tom Cruise and his daughter, Suri. And we all suspect that it's because Katie Holmes is now considered a suppressive person by Scientology because she left Scientology. So now the big question is, knowing this, and with Suri turning 18, will anything change? This was in the Daily Mail. Tom Cruise does not exist to daughter Suri. Katie Holmes' child will celebrate her 18th birthday without her Scientologist father as insiders reveal devastating truth of how their fractured relationship finally fell apart for good. You know, and there's some pictures you can see her. Just, it's just been so, it's been nice watching her grow up. I mean, it seems like just yesterday she was six, five years old and he was carrying her around. And now here we go. She's all, she's all, she's all grown up. Suri 18 has lived a relatively low-key life, normal life with mom Katie in recent years. It's no secret that she has a long, she has long had a complicated relationship with father Tom. Now on her 18th birthday, dailymail.com offers an exclusive look inside her life. And it kind of goes into the background about her life. There's a link down below to the full article so you can read it. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I'm ma mainly interested in what you guys think. I want you to tell me in the chat. And if you're catching this on the replay, tell me in the comments. Do you think Tom Cruise, now that his daughter is 18, legally an adult, will establish a relationship with the daughter? What do you think will happen? I'm very conflicted about it and I am not sure but I wanted to, I wanted to take it to the people and see what the deal is. Tell me what you think. What do you think? Do you think that he's going to make an effort or is he just going to pretty much he's chosen Scientology over her? She is dead to him. And that is it. All right. You guys think about that. Go ahead and comment about that. And we're going to kind of, oh, okay. Interesting. A lot of you are saying no <gasps> way more than I thought. Okay. Looks like some some absolute dogs unite against Scientology. Nope. Nope. Mama Bluebird, not a chance. He loves Scientology more than his daughter. Just a Northern girl. Hell nah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, no. The Nona Boss Audits and Investigations. Good morning, Natalie, my Tony, and the beautiful people in the chat. Good morning to you as well. Tamara's saying no relationship. Denise is saying, I hope Siri stays away from Tom Cruise. And SPTV fan is saying she should just stay away from him. Interesting. Jill says he might, she won't. That's interesting too. And I've thought about that. Put yourself in her shoes, right? Over Scientology, you've pretty much lost a parent. And she's. this isn't unique to her. We've known about this. The policy of disconnection in Scientology has existed for ages. And we have shared, and you've heard about it all over the place, so many stories, even here on YouTube, of families destroyed and disconnected. Mama's Life is saying Siri is done with him. Never an SP. No, she's an SP. Yep. Swede, Swede Elizabeth. I'm not sure Katie Holmes will allow that. That's the thing though. Siri turning 18 kind of changes that a little bit. And maybe not. I mean, it seems like they have a good relationship and I just, to be a fly on the wall, <laughs> right? <laughs> Amy says, uh, I bet Siri watches the protest. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know how much she knows or would have remembered about the short time that she was in Scientology as a young child. You never know, though. You never know. <laughs> but one thing we do know about Tom Cruise is he seems to pull in or create, whichever is the case, more suppressive people than anybody on the face of the planet. Just go through his list of wives. He either has a knack for marrying suppressives or he turned people into suppressive people. We're not sure. First wife, second wife, third wife. Yep. All of them considered suppressives by Scientology. So does he pull them in or does he create them? We might never know. But interesting news nonetheless about Tom Cruise and Siri. And I wish them the absolute best. I hope Katie and Siri continue to enjoy life outside of a cult, away from Scientology, doing activities of their own choosing, making their own choices. I love that they're doing that. And I love that for them. We're going to look at a clip from Scientology. Uh, excuse me, from ce Celebrity Blinds. And it's a blind item that really is not so much a blind item. And she kind of explains that too. And this is about David Miscavige and the recent lawsuits. And uh, I thought it was interesting. Let's take a look at this from the beginning. It's just a little bit over a minute. Here's a new blind item that is allegedly about the Church of Scientology, their leader, David Miscavige, and their legal troubles. If things go as poorly as it looks as it will today in court for the celebrity cult, there have been discussions about settling all the lawsuits against it and just making it all go away. The constant negative publicity is never good for business. And again, this allegedly David Miscavige and Scientology. And the related headline reads, Scientology stuns Jane Doe attorneys, bounces judge before ruling can be made. Our courtroom observer just described what happened this morning in Jane Doe's forced marriage case, and we said we could hardly believe what we are hearing. They said that Jane Doe's attorneys appeared to feel the same way as well. This morning, we reported that Judge Robert Broadbelt had filed a tentative ruling last night that would have denied Scientology's motion to force Jane Doe's lawsuit into religious arbitration. That proposed ruling was based on a reading of new federal law that prevents forcing cases with schmectual allegations into arbitration, as well as a conclusion that Scientology's arbitration is so one-sided is unconscionable. Interesting. I love when other creators on YouTube cover Scientology news and what's happening, especially the legal cases. We're still keeping an eye on that. We're going to see what happens. But uh, And I'm reading your comments too in the chat. It seems like you definitely all, not one person said that Suri and Tom Cruise, at least not that I saw, would have a relationship. <laughs> and how do you, I mean, think about it. If you're estranged from a parent, take Scientology out of it. It, it can be done, I think, through therapy and counseling and a lot of grace. There can be repair done in families. Sometimes it can't. Sometimes it's just, it's just too much. It takes both sides to be able to heal and come together and repair a relationship. And I think she's well within her right to be, you know what? No, where have you been this whole time? Where were you when I was a child? So it's interesting and something to keep an eye on. All right, let's take a look at uh, Miriam Francis put out a post recently. If you don't know Miriam, you're not familiar 
with her, you can head over here on YouTube to Rage Against the Dark Arts. That's her YouTube channel. It's linked down below in the description. There is a link to her page where she did a post. If you've been following her story, Miriam has been working very hard to bring justice in her case where when she was a very young child, she was assaulted by her own father, who was a member of the C organization, and Scientology covered it up and continues to cover it up. And Miriam Francis has been seeking justice in that ever since. And in her, in the whole process of doing that, she has had, you know, dust ups with Mike Rinder. We're familiar with what has happened. Things have kind of gone back and forth. And she recently did a post that we're going to take a look at that, uh, Many of you sent to me. I had not seen it, so I until I, I got a ton of emails about this. I, I, I'm this. This is why it's great you guys send me stuff because there's so much content I don't see everything. But let's take a look at it. And this is from Rage Against the Dark Arts. That's Miriam Francis, and that's her channel here on YouTube. It says to Mike Rinder and all parents who abandoned their children inside Hubbard's private Scientology Navy to be subjected to unrestricted abuse, psychological torture, unrelenting, intimate invasion of privacy, and ongoing denial of basic human rights. The kids never had a choice. You had the choice. Taryn, I think that's how you say your name. Taryn, could be Taryn. Taryn and Ben Rinder are stuck inside there, just the same as my brother, Ben Francis, is stuck there in a mind prison. You put those babies in there. You made them believe that they weren't good for anything except labor for the greatest good. You denied them an education. You denied them a way out. You closed the door and threw away the key. This is your shame. This is your burden to carry. Stop telling us we're whining. And this is a, uh, a picture of Mike Rinder's children or early on, early on. His daughter's gone on to do some hate videos and what you pretty much would expect from Scientology. But Miriam Francis does make, you know, it's just bringing light again to, there are times when, you know, it, it made me think about, I thought about this because I thought, you know, my daughter went into the Sea Org and I had to go and get her out because I was told she would be able to leave the minute she said she wanted to. And I knew my daughter and I knew that would not take long. And sure enough, it didn't. But I ended up having to fly out to Los Angeles and force them to give me back my daughter. It took almost two weeks. It was ridiculous. This issue of Scientology and specifically the C organization, separating families, trying to take children for free labor in Scientology is very real. You see it in, as staff members in smaller organizations around the world and also the C organization itself. So it's something I'm glad Miriam is shining a light on because this still continues to be a problem, even though I can tell you Scientology is having a hard time recruiting second and third generation Scientologists because many of these kids, especially the younger ones, they grew up on the internet. They grew up on the internet, they grew up on social media, and many of them have been exposed to Scientology content and not the kind Scientology would like them to see. Because what do young people do? They like TikTok, they're here on YouTube, they're on different platforms, and there's so much content out there about Scientology. Thanks to all of you, all of the people, whether you're an ex-Scientologist or you have never been in Scientology, but you were here and you were all in on bringing down the cult have helped to do this, to get this content out and have it showing up in the feeds of younger people in Scientology so they have a chance to find out the truth about Scientology because they're never going to find out otherwise. So I think this speaks also to the need to continue to get these messages out. That's why it makes me so happy when I see shorts about it. And on TikTok, look at Liz Gale slaying it on TikTok and sharing short form content. And that is just a great way to continue to get the message out about Scientology and help people, not just who are still in, stop them from getting in, but really reach the younger generation of second and third Scientologists. And it's working. And I know this because I've even heard from some of them. Some of them are of an age where they're not able to go back on, go out on their own, but they're aware of what's going and they know the truth about Scientology, even though their parents don't. And they don't want a situation like with Tom Cruise and Siri. There's a, a lot of them, it's, they don't want to lose their family. And that what, that is what keeps them quiet until they can be of age to make, you know, not be forced into it. It's just really interesting. And I'm just, I'm just so grateful and thankful for everybody who shares content and moves the needle forward in terms of 
sharing what Scientology is and how insidious disconnection is and how it works as well. Oh No Nora got into sharing a bit about fake accounts here on YouTube. I touched on this a little bit the other day. I found out there was a fake account going around posting in chats pretending to be me. And uh, I've seen some other ones as well. And I think that most of you are probably aware of that. And it's just a good reminder to not everything is as it seems sometimes, especially in chats. And let's just take a little peek at this video that Oh No Nora did. The fake account is surviving underscore Scientology. This is like, guys, if when you get your cybersecurity shit from, uh, you know, your uh, IT department at work, and they're like, watch out for weird emails that are spelled almost the same way, but they have like a slightly different thing. This is exactly what they're talking about. Okay. Um, this channel was created. Oh, Quinky Dink. November of last year. Interesting, 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 interesting. And it's a total troll account that keeps changing its handle constantly. I did report it. You guys are free to go report it as well. Okay. And uh, now I have a theory. I always have a theory. You got to go watch the full video link down below to find out Nora's theory. It's a good one. And it really makes a good point. And I want to say, if you see me in any chat and especially making any comments that are, you know, really rude, no, that's not me. I hardly ever now recently, in fact, I'm probably not going to be commenting in chats. One of the reasons is because I love watching content and, you know, I clip it, people send it, we share it. And I don't want to distract from whatever is happening. <laughs> I want to see, you know, what's happening in real time and then be able to share that. But keep an eye out for that. And if you see any of these fake troll accounts, please do report them. Uh, I think they're few and far between, to be honest. But sometimes when they're out there, they're out there. And hopefully YouTube will come up with a better way of being able to prevent that. But if you see it, do report it. Sandy Lee says, I love Oh No Nora. Yep, Nora does some great content. Kathy says, Nora was on fire. Yes, yeah, she was. Let's take a look at, um, so this is a clip. This is, I think it's a short that Perth Scientology Audit did. And I think this is from an original interview with, with uh, Dodge Landisman and Mitch, Mitch Brisker, which we've talked on the other day. But many of you sent me this clip. So I'm like, okay, we'll share it and we will talk about it. And it has to do with kind of what we're talking about. Children in Scientology, children in the Sea Org. And I would define, you know, children are different ages, young teenagers. Teenagers themselves are still, they're older children. But when you're under the age of 18, you are a minor and you cannot consent when it comes to Scientology. And this continues to be an issue, as we know. And let's take a look. I'm going to pull this up. And you can see it's they're talking about children being in, in the C organization. Dodge Landisman says when he was in Chicago protesting Scientology, which he was, that he saw with his own eyes children putting together the stages dressed in black. Pearl Snappy in Austin brought up the same thing. She saw them as well. This has been reported in multiple places where there have been the big Scientology stage at these idol org openings. People who have done services in recent years in Scientology organizations, and many of them are out, will say, yes, there are, there are C organization members under the age of 18. They still are recruiting kids. Let's take a look at this. How are they getting away with the teens in the organization being there? So we'll segue a little bit because this is an interesting question. Okay, well, I'm here's the deal. The teens who are in. I'm not okay. sure it still happens with the kids as messengers and such. Well, right. It's like I saw kids working on the on the dais and the stage, and they're like probably 15 in Chicago. When, when so did you I, see I, that? I oh, really? Lambert is alive and well. But they, were they in Sea Org? Were they in Sea Org uniforms? No, they no, they see yeah. as more casual so maybe they you know yeah they might have picked them up as local volunteers uh, i mean here's the deal let me just say this i'm going to go on record as saying this everybody can attack me all you want you all know my contact information you're used to it yeah there haven't been children in the sea org in 20 years okay i'm okay. sorry to disappoint you yes. but there's no children in hotels there's no children being abused it's it's that whole Not thing now. is a big is a big uh it's just a misdirection to <sighs> You liar! So 
how are they getting away with the teens and the or- <laughs> Again, that was a short from Perth Scientology audit. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what to say about that, except I have no idea why we'd be saying that when we've seen them with our own eyes. We know that they're there. We hear from their families as well. So there are children still in the C organization. Now, if you don't consider a 14, 15, 16 year old to be a child, then maybe, you know, it's semantics at that point. There are children under the age of 18 still being recruited by the C organization, separated by their families, not being given a proper education, doing jobs that they shouldn't be doing, being trained to do things that they shouldn't be doing as well. That's a large part of what we talk about here on SPTV and work to expose as it is one of the major issues with Scientology. And we've seen what happens when children who grow up in Scientology, especially in the SEA organization, you've met many of them here on SPTV, and they've told you what that experience is like, what the outcome is, and what life is like as an adult, and the work they need to do through therapy or other means to just get back to some type of basic point of undoing the damage that is done through Scientology. It is different when you are an adult and you subject yourself to the procedures in Scientology, right? It's, it's, it's tough enough then, or when you've grown up in Scientology, and this is the only normal you know, and you don't see it as abuse. And that's the insidious nature of this. And I'm telling you this, as someone who grew up in Scientology, it's very insidious. Much of what happens you do not see as being abusive. You see it as discipline because that's how it's pre- how it's presented to you. And this is not unique to Scientology. If you look at p- anyone who's been in, in people who have suffered abusive relationships, whether it was at the hand of a parent, a spouse, a partner, whatever that was, there gets to be a point at some point at different moments they'll share and tell you, I thought I deserved it because I didn't do X, Y, Z. When I got my daughter out of Scientology, when I had to go go through ridiculous lengths to get her out of flag, where she was from the time she was there when she was 17, and she had turned 18 while she was there, and I knew that if Scientology knew I was leaving, that I was going to leave Scientology, they would ship her anywhere to get her away from me because she was 18, and I was able to get my daughter out without my daughter even knowing that that's what I was doing. Because that's the level of what it takes when it comes to getting somebody out of Scientology, especially a younger person. And like I said, my daughter was there at 17. She turned 18 while she was there, became a legal adult. All you got to do is look anywhere on SPTV, on YouTube, with the effects of children in Scientology to understand why This is such a major point and why also this is the last thing Scientology wants you to know about or wants you to believe about the Sea Org, that there are kids there, that they are still being subjected to abusive practices along with their adult counterparts. I was just in Clearwater at Flag outside the Sandcastle and I saw at least five younger people who easily could have been under the age of 18 that I know for sure that they were. No. But they definitely looked like it. So this is something I don't understand why. um, It's a big issue Scientology does not want you to know about. Let's just leave it at that. And saying otherwise and trying to cover it up or say that it doesn't exist. I don't understand that mindset either, especially when we literally hear about it on a daily basis. Behind the scenes too. Let's go over to Pasadena. We are going to take a look at this because you guys... I had so much fun watching these videos and getting caught up on what they were doing. Jessica Palmadessa, Confident Chris, and LA Cam went to Scientology in Pasadena. Uh, let's see, where are we going to start here? Let's start with, it looks like Jessica Palmadessa and Confident Chris went inside the organization there in Pasadena. Um, but the, of course, they were not there for long. But let's take a look at the video. And I do believe this is from, I think this is from... Jessica Palmadessa's stream. Let's take a look. <laughs> it's a lady. It's a- I think they're getting ready to go in. Let's move it forward a little bit. I'm not going in with my phone. Dude, I don't. I have two hands. You're not gonna. I want to see. I mean, there was a point of the door. You said you were gonna go in. Oh, 
Oh, you oh guys my god. Bro, I have two hands. Jessica, just put it in your pocket. <laughs> Bro, I have two. I'm try. I have two hands, guys, and three phones. I'm sorry. All right, jeez, I'm crackers. I got three streams. No, I have no. It's visible. So move forward. So they go in there, but you can't see him where he's where he's videoing. They were like around a corner, but then they come out. Pretty quickly. You guys need button cams for real. Let's get filming though. Come on. Yeah, come on in. If they don't come out in 10 minutes, I'm pretty. I'm so mad. Why couldn't you see through this window? Look, you can't see past the window. Past the window. So, you past the window. You see this window. so you weren't able to see them inside, but they were in there for a little bit and then they were pretty quickly asked to leave, even though they didn't have their cameras. But I think that it's interesting to me because I often wonder. How many staff members know about the protests or the live streamers? Do they have photos of like, keep an eye out for these people because there are some key ones that will go around to different Scientology organizations. It just kind of makes you wonder what the deal is. What is the deal there that, you know, are they, how, how close track are they keeping? Scientology does not only share all of the information they have on people with the different organizations. They will often keep it really tight. Some people within this one organization will know what's happening and other staff members won't. It just depends on where you're at in that organization. But here's what was also found out at Pasadena. And this was fantastic. Pasadena Scientology is in trouble with the fire department for not having working fire sprinklers. Take a look at this. Back it up. Look, at, look at that. They totally got cited for it. Fire sprinkler system not active. She muted the video. Oh, MD Media 18 is going to be there tonight. They put a fire sign on the door, guys. So that was great. They went inside, but more importantly, I love that they they found that, that Pasadena doesn't have a working fire sprinklers. And you got to wonder, is that something that got found out when the fire department was called and was there? Any of the times, I don't know. But yes, Malta McMurchie sprinkler tech fail. <laughs> and don't they have one of those new buildings too? Isn't there one of those ideal organizations? I'm blanking on that. Tell me in the chat if you know and tell me in the comments if you catch this on the replay. Because I'm pretty sure they're one of those ideal organizations. But do ideal organizations not include fire sprinklers up to code and have them working and on? I mean, come on, this is not the first time that we've known Scientology to just completely ignore a rule or a law or an ordinance. I just love that they're getting called out on it. Let's go over to the blue buildings where DOA and Mindy Williams were. This is a short clip, but it was an interesting one because it does look like that what they're doing there in Hollywood is getting the attention very possibly of some local journalists. Watch this. So you're the lucky one. Mister, I don't I want to be seen, but I'm giving you my number. I'm a journalist. Can you call me? Yeah. About the stuff. I'm not going to linger here. Yeah. Call me. Call me. Uh, I'm thank you. Wow. So you're the lucky one. You know, and that was it. Here's my card. Can you call me? Just walking by. Just a little glimpse into, you know, what's kind of happening out there. I thought that was absolutely fabulous. I loved it. Now, Minnie Willens and others went over to La Poubelle, where they were protesting, and had an interesting interaction with, maybe you guys know, because I wasn't able to see the whole thing, and I, I have my own questions about this. I'm going to show you a clip. If you guys know who this guy is, tell me in the chat. If you're catching this on the replay, I want you to tell me in the comments. Who is this guy? I just know that it was beyond cringe for me. Maybe I just took it that way. You guys watch it. And I want you to tell me what you think about this. <laughs> this interaction, which was weird, strange, and odd on multiple levels. And uh, this is on Mindy Willen's stream. Check it out. Tell them a little secret. Okay. Yeah. You got a little bit of 
sass in you. Oh, yeah? I like you that. You like it? I'm going to say, you, like you kind of look like you like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not used to girls being vocal like that. Whatever. <laughs> <Sort of> like, <laughs> you went at, you know, I was like, hey, what? Wait, if you if you wait, you said that you're friends with DOA. You said that you know what's going on over here. Then why would you ask us to put our cameras down? Relax. I don't know. If you know what we've been through, I don't think you would be saying for me to relax. I'm famous, so it's just I want to talk. That's all. So I'm famous. I'm famous. Like, well, we're out, we're out here filming for a purpose, though, okay, so, yeah, we need then to keep filming. Talk. Yeah, no worries. If you want, we can give you some privacy. No, I won't. Okay. Bring it down a notch. Me bring it down a notch? Yeah, bring it down. You think I'm out of just, order? Just, just with me. Just with me. Relax. I'm not quite sure how to take this. Do you see how he's gaslighting her? Calm down, relax. Number one, if you have half a brain, you know the last thing you ever say to a female is calm down. You're going to F around and find out real quick where that's going to get you. And let's just start with the fact that Mindy was calm. Who is this guy, you guys? Does anyone know? He says he's famous. Has anybody figured it out yet? I know. he. <laughs> that's right. The whole chat was like super grossed out about it. I just don't know what the deal is. I know, but that's why I'm teaching you. Oh my gosh. He's teaching her. Calm down. Let me teach you. He's going to keep going. Oh no, he's going to teach me. Oh my God. <laughs> But I like your set, you know. Well, oh, thank goodness for that. At least you like just bizarre. It was one of the more bizarre interactions, I think. And we have seen some strange interactions. Let's be real, right? Yep. Sandy Lee, I agree with you. I completely agree with you. Better for having visited this place. Not used to girls being vocal. Wow. Just wow. Yeah, exactly. Who says that? Especially in 2024. I'm not used to girls being vocal. Calm down. Let me explain this to you. <laughs> Oh, and he's famous, by the way, you guys. I don't know if you knew. He's famous. He is so famous that nobody yet's been able to tell me in the chat who this guy is. <laughs> That's right, Stasha. Love what all the protesters are doing. Don't you know who I am? Type vibes. <laughs> yep. I agree. Run, Mindy, run. What a full on creeper. Dorothy, I'm with you. Mindy handled him well. Mindy totally did. Mindy got his, I mean, knew, just could, you know, nail the type pretty quickly. And she was just being Mindy. And I love that she didn't let that, you know, didn't let that bring her down to his level. Right, Jody? Weirdo, you relax. Yeah, very strange. Relax is not a relaxing thing to hear. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad you guys agree with me because I'm like, am I just being too judgmental? You know what I'm saying? So, but apparently I'm not. OMG, he just, did he just tell a woman to relax? <laughs> exactly, Natalie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Mock I always have a hard time with your name. Let's call you M. <laughs> Is he trying to flirt with her while he's insulting her? I don't know. But yes, it was nasty. I agree. I agree. Okay, so I don't think anybody actually knows who he is. Not that I've seen. Yeah, teaching her, Tara, right? Wasn't that a little weird? Very creepy. Now, or was this the op? Was the op to make her feel creepy and unsafe? Because that is something that Scientology would do because they know that for, especially for women, it is not uncommon for women to be made to feel very uncomfortable by that. But here's the thing. We have a voice, we use that voice, and we have no problem doing it anymore. And that stuff doesn't work and you're going to be called out on it. It sounds like some serious 1950s espionage. I'm going to try to get into your head by gaslighting you with my, my what would you even call it? <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Oh, and your comments are just cracking me up. You guys, you guys are the best. Yep. I, I hear what you guys are saying. He might be a shill. Is a shill the same thing as like an op or, you know, kind of thing? You guys have to tell me. Yep. Corn freak. That is exactly what I thought too. So having an opinion is having sass. <laughs> Oh, completely. All right. Let's get on to the next one. Where are we at here? We're going to take a look at Brain Fog. I think that is the name of the channel. This is in San Francisco, right? And uh, the name of her video is uh, Scientology gave me a mini SWAT, I think. And we're going to take a look at what happened and an inter interaction she had with police here in San Francisco. Okay, guys. Thank you. Have a good day. I finally got that cops here <laughs> and they, they were here for a couple of minutes. So they ought to see what I was doing. So it's like, I'm not doing anything. That's in, you know, hello, how are you? The cops didn't work. Oh, is that a paper on me? Ooh, 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 gotta follow. <laughs> ooh, they're getting serious finally. I love it. Yep, yep, she's going to them. <laughs> oh, I'm blocking the doorway? Yes, I've been standing in the middle, but not when anybody's walking up to me. I do not what? I guess I can give you guys my real name. I just don't want them to know it. Yeah, no problem. That's okay. okay. It's like, as long as you're not blocking, like physically blocking, if, if people, that's what we try to explain to her. Yeah, no. That, that you know, if, if, if you have a right to do what you want, oh, you're on the thing, right? You're not Wait, blocking people. This is people San Francisco. Red, We've right. been doing it for ages. Right. So she claims she claims that you were standing blocking the door. I, I haven't done that in a few days because I realized I was doing it. But the guy mm -hmm. today. You can even hear on my feed. I'm like, oh my God, it got right by me. I'm not blocking. Okay, okay. Because do you know what they're doing to them in LA? They're swatting them like crazy in LA. No, saying okay. they have bombs, saying they have blow torches. Yeah. It's like the people in LA protest. I mean, I'm yeah. lucky to be here because, yeah. you know, we've had protesters since the 60s. Yeah. And it's like, uh, there's one other protester I have or that protests around here. Uh, and I told her, don't block the doorway, yeah, don't right. do this. Um, right. I've been standing in the middle of the bronze stores because uh -huh. that's like a service entrance of theirs during the day. Yeah. And since it's. So the, the, her video was so great for multiple reasons. She's not blocking the entrance. And that is pretty darn obvious too. People are getting by. She even had on film Scientologists getting by. And I love too that the officer really seemed to kind of like know what the deal was. And this is a beautiful thing in many cities. We see often, I think when, you know, when the police are not doing their job, are not enforcing the actual ordinance, are trying to be arbitrary about what those are. But a lot of the times too, you get where they kind of like, yeah. Yeah, we know. And they will enforce what the proper ordinances and laws are. And if you're breaking them, they'll let you know. They'll also let you know, hey, here's the line of where you need to be. Here's what the rules are. And it was just really interesting. I thought uh, she did a great job. This is someone who's new to me. I know, you know, Ashley, I catch her videos on there. Uh, so be sure to also check out Brain Fog, I think. It's like Brain Fog dot dot dot, I think and subscribe and make sure you subscribe to Ashley Andrews as well. Here she is because she also goes outside San Francisco and is protesting and has some really great content out there. All right. Someone else who's got some great content and has just been on fire is Trashy V12 BMW in Chicago. You guys. You got to see some of what he was doing. First, let's take a little look at a clip. He made a short of a very short conversation he had asking a Scientologist a question. Simple question. You think it wouldn't be hard, but apparently this day it was. On the Church of Scientology, just asking some Scientologist questions. What would you say is one of the biggest misconceptions about Scientology? You don't have any comment on it? Why don't you want to answer that? That's pretty weird that you wouldn't want to answer that, man. I think I think you're mocking up your own reactive mind and you really don't need to be doing it anymore. Shatter. Yeah. Hey, sir, we're 
I just love that he throws out the clear cognition. And for those that do not know, in Scientology, Scientologists pay, oh gosh, tens of thousands, if not over a hundred thousand by the time they reach the state of clear, where you're supposed to have the realization, this is how they know you made it, because you realize, I've been mocking up my own reactive mind and I'm not going to do it anymore. I love that he throws that out there. He just potentially saved that man some money. <laughs> Okay, like I was saying, Trush was on fire because he was out there with the Scientology recruiters. And I, I'm so glad he caught this on video because sometimes you wonder, like, do they just hand things out? I think it depends on the recruiter. But this particular Scientology recruiter, and this is something that they train people to do in Scientology, gets directly in the path of somebody like jumping out at them like, oh, boom, Xenu. Of course, they don't say that. It's here's a flyer to a movie or come in and do our personality test so we can find out what's ruining your life and tell you that Scientology is going to help you with that. But take a look at this video. And this again is on a trashy V12 BMW on his channel. Oh, yep. There we go. There we go. Let me step right in front of you. Guys, there's a recruiter out here. Let's go. Guys, guys, you, you don't want that. This this place is a cult. Yeah, just throw it out. Hello, sir. We're just documenting how you guys operate here. He goes on and he walks all the way around the block and, you know, he he tries to hand out his promo to somebody else. But Trushy is right there <laughs> letting people know, hey, that's a cult. That's a cult. That's a cult. And then at some point, the police come and they're, you know, they're using chalk art. They're using chalk tech there laying out what Scientology is. I think it says it's a cult and something else. And I love that the police just let them know. Yep. Yep, you're fine. You're fine. You can just carry on. It's possible. You can exercise your First Amendment rights, so you're blue in the face, and you can stay out here for as long as you'd like. I videotape and do whatever it is that you guys want to do, as long as you're not obstructing them or their members or whoever it is. And like I told him, shock isn't as, a, as soon as it rains, it'll wash away. So it's yes, not criminal. It's watchable. You can yeah, look at the. I get it. You can look at the. So. It's your father. You see at the end, the Scientologist come out. He's kind of that goofy guy who's been there. This is in Chicago. This is in Chicago. <laughs> the sound's really low on some of those videos there. I tried to turn it up. I love it too, Farah. I love how everyone is using chalk tech to inform people. We did it in Clearwater and uh, they got it off pretty quick. I think they come out right after we leave to get rid of it. But it is, it is, an, it is a, uh, a neat way to get a message out there. And people do see it. And you know who else sees it? The Scientologists and the staff and security or whoever gets sent out to clean it up. There's no way they're not reading it while they are cleaning it. So I think that's absolutely amazing as well. I just love that so much about it. I want to thank Kel Bell for becoming a new member on the channel. Thank you so much. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> And earlier we were talking about Tom Cruise and his daughter and Asen says, as I have kids who have had years of no contact with their dad, they are not interested. So thinks that Siri would not be interested. One, I am so sorry that your children don't have a relationship with their dad. But yeah, I think you're right. I think you are right. Someone else, oh, it was Asen again, commented that, and then Mike Rinder praises Stephanie Hutchinson for bashing his daughter. <laughs> yep. It will look like the internet will take down the cult of Scientology. I agree. I agree with that completely. Let's, I want to show you guys something. This is a building that Scientology bought in Boston. Let's take a look at this. We are going to look at some photos. These are, these were very interesting to me. Let's see here. All right. Let's just go through a couple of these. The, this is in Boston, where apparently it sounds like Boston bought their organization, like they bought a building, but they've got a temporary building and this building is not being used. And this is from Kiko in Boston. That's the channel that uh, where these come from. Check it out. Let's let's just go through and look at a couple of these. 
when you buy a building and you don't do anything with it and you don't take care of it, it just sits there falling apart. I mean, look at that growing over there. What is that? Garbage outside. So is something going on in Boston? Is anybody out in Boston around this place? 214 Lincoln Street is where it is. These are bush clip clippings. So maybe at some point they're keeping, well, doesn't look like they're keeping up the landscaping because this is also there and there's just what look like empty beer cans there, right? Is that some glass over there? Like, what is this? And this is in Boston. You can see in a little bit, so it looks like something's going on. Or maybe that's left over from when they bought the building. But uh, yeah, Boston, you can kind of tell. You look at it and it's like not much is happening. Not much is happening. <laughs> but if anyone's in Boston, I would love to get a closer look at some of that too. Or if you know anything happening with the current organization, is this the building they're going to move into? Or did they buy a whole nother one? It just, I call me crazy. It just seems like a lot of wasted money by Scientology to just have empty buildings that nothing is done with, Right. USB cord 11. Honestly, that could be done in one night. The cans and glass. Yes, absolutely. That could be picked up. Stasia says trash can tag. <laughs> yeah, Marty, good point. Just like the old Toronto org, decaying and an eyesore, yet bought and purchased on the backs of Scientologists who went into debt to be able to do this. Many of them financially ruined. Did you guys know that in Scientology, that if you want to declare bankruptcy, Scientology will ha try to handle you not to do that because of the large number of Scientologists who end up needing to do that because of the overwhelming amount of debt from Scientology, not just from Scientology services, but these ideal org programs, the International Association of Scientologists, multiple front groups, multiple front groups. It just bleeds them dry. It just really does. It really does. This is interesting. Amber says, I'm now in my late 40s. As a kid growing up in the cult, I didn't see my dad much because he's a never in. So I got to see him in December and I told him everything that happened to me. Wow. Amber, that's interesting. That I mean, it's great that so your dad wasn't in, in the cult, but you were. But sounds like you reconnected with him and you told him everything that happened. I love that. I absolutely love that. All right. Let's take a look. <laughs> Oh, no, Nora. No PR flaps for Sinto. They are cause. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Isn't that the truth, right? They are cause. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Keep walking. Nothing to see here. All right. Now, for some reason, I am not hearing the videos. And so I don't know if this is going to be a problem with the with the volume. But Nancy, if you can tell me when I start this clip, this is from Aaron over at Growing Up in Scientology. And I know Aaron was here in the chat earlier. We made him a mod so that you know that it's him when he pops in. I think that's something we'll do with a few people so we know. Uh, okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, just a clip from a video Aaron did just sharing about how great the week was that we had in Clearwater. I'll share more about that as well. Check it out. I just kind of wanted to sit down and, and tell you a little bit about it and, um, and just say a few things and thank a few people and uh because it, it really was special and um you know this wasn't uh, an sptv get together uh, some people seem to think that i'm the one that flew people into town i'm not i had, had nothing to do with it um <clears throat> it wasn't an sptv get together some people thought it was uh, an sptv foundation get together it wasn't it wasn't that either i had had nothing to do with it um, it really was uh, a week to show Natalie and Tony as much fun, rest, and relaxation as possible. And, uh, and, and a, a few other people came in just to make it as, as fun as possible. It was so great. I am so thankful for everybody that made it so special for Tony and I. And really, that's what it was about. Tony and I decided to go out to Clearwater. You guys have been following, you know, what's been happening with him medically. I'm going to do an update on that, if not later today, tomorrow, because there has been a lot that has happened. And I'm going to address that in a separate video. It was so great. We decided that after having a conversation, Tony and I, I'm like, what would you like to do? And one was get some sun. We had gone to Chicago to protest to, you know, try that out and see what it was like. And 
spend some time in Chicago. And that was great because another thing he wants to do is a little bit of traveling. And we thought, well, let's go to Clearwater. That checks the boxes of sun, right? To get into the water and be able to just connect with more friends and also protest Scientology. For me, being able to protest at Flag was huge. And the fact that the last time we went out to protest, Tony was able to make it made me so happy. That was so much fun. And for me, it truly was a highlight. Being able to 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 yell and educate and expose and say, David Miscavige beats his staff, two Sea Org members and other Scientologists, and all of the other things that I was saying was incredibly healing. And it was the cherry on top of what was an amazing week. And that week really was about, Tony and I said, hey, you know what? We want to come to Clearwater. We want to do some protesting of Scientology, but mainly we want to get together. We want to meet the people there. We've become very close to many people in the community that really have become close friends, but we've not met them in person and thought this would be a great opportunity to do that. And thankfully, surrounded by Scientology, George arranged so many things. And one of that was getting a few of the people we've gotten close to, to be able to, to come and join us and well and spend that time and have fun. And like Aaron said in his video, originally we thought, oh, it'll be great too, because we'll create all this content. We'll do these interviews. And really that was something we thought we planned on doing. But when it came to it, we found so much healing and just being able to be together and relax and talk and communicate and share and learn more about each other outside of Scientology. Not having it, you know, tell me about your family, but also talk about our shared experience as well. And it was incredible. And there were so many people that made this happen. Like I was saying, George, surrounded by Scientology, Sandy McKenna, Spit Clearwater, Kai, meeting his family was outstanding. And everyone who came, Jenna Miscavige made it, Liz Gale, and Kelly Copter. It was amazing. And there were so many people there locally and many, many to thank. We went out and protested and were able to get together with Farrell Cheryl and Lori Plays, people who I've been watching here and sharing their videos but had not had the opportunity to meet them. And I'm so glad that it did work out the way it did because originally, and you guys heard me kept saying like, hey, we're just going and we're doing this. We're not meeting a bunch of people and all that because it really was more about putting together a support network for Tony and I with everything that we're going to go through. Oh, oh I really thought I could make it through this. <laughs> this was really about that. It was about knowing some things that were going to come and you know what? I'll just tell you and I will do another video as well to get more in depth about it. We knew when we went to Florida that we were going to find out more news about Tony and thought, well, what better place to be but be surrounded by friends? And we were. And you know what? I am going to talk about, talk about this more in another video, but I just want to tell you, it could not have been more perfect. It could not have been a better place to be surrounded by the people that we were when we got the news that we did. And I will always be so thankful to everybody that made that happen and made it possible for us to do that. And for both of us to be able to be out there and express ourselves by protesting Scientology, by taking that so much energy and just directing it somewhere and at least putting it towards protesting Scientology is a positive thing because sometimes, a lot of times in life, especially when it comes to medical and cancer, you don't have any control. You don't. And we just thought, while we can, let's do that. Let's get together. Let's meet these people that we've gone, we've grown so close to and put together this support. And we did. And it was fantastic. And because so many people reached out just in the last couple of days, we decided we would do the meet and greet. I was blown away by the amount of people who came from California, from all over the country without 
us really putting out there, we, well, we didn't plan on doing a meet and greet till kind of the last minute because so many people were coming. And then I'm so glad we did it because I got to meet so many of you and hear your stories and why you connect with SPTV, why this topic resonates with you, even though you've never been in Scientology. And it blew my mind. It was so, it, just, it added to the entire experience. And uh, we didn't think Tony was going to make it to the meet and greet that day. Actually, he had dropped me off and needed to go back to the house where we were staying. And he made it. He came back and he made it. And you want to hear a little funny backstory. He told me it's, it was, you know, it's not the easiest thing for him always to do, especially when he's got that really bad fatigue. But he saw at one point when we all got to, to Nash Keys, where we were all meeting, it was me and so many people and so many people were coming. And I was a little overwhelmed in all of the good ways, but he knew that I could definitely use him there, which was true. And he showed up and it was great. Speaker Bob saying, let's do a meet and greet in Minnesota. We probably could. We probably can. So probably potentially later on today, I am going to do a separate video. I'm going to fill you guys in on exactly what happened and what's going on and what's to come. But you know, I like to keep that separate as much as I can from the recaps, even though here we are. But again, I just want you to know how much we appreciate all of your support, everybody who showed up, everyone in our community who made this happen. Aaron, thank you so much for your hospitality and the use of your pool, the swings, <laughs> all of it. We just had an incredible time. Tony was just in his element. He loves the heat and the sun and being in the water. So it was, it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And, and to be surrounded by so many people who are there for us. And who understood while we were there. It, it was just incredible. And I will forever be grateful. And I feel so much more not alone in this. I wasn't alone in it before. I have an amazing family. And, uh, but, whoops. But even more so, we really feel that. And what we intended to accomplish, what we hoped for, was accomplished and so much more. So I could sit here all day and tell you guys, thank you so much over everyone who, who just helped make this possible because it meant a lot. So later on today, I will probably do another video. I hope you guys can join for that. If you don't catch it live, catch it on the replay. I appreciate all of you so much, your continued support. You keep showing up. I will keep showing up. And I mean that. So thank you. I hope you guys get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day.